Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless there is a coming world dictator known as the antichrist who is foretold of in the bible who in the near future will control a worldwide government a worldwide monetary system and a worldwide religion he will use surveillance technology to control the peoples of the world is he living now probably is the Antichrist already working behind the scenes to bring about his plan for world economic and political domination? It seems so. From all indications, the Antichrist satanic technology-based system is already being set in place. He will use technology to achieve and enforce his near total control of the world and its people, and they don't even see it coming. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Okay, picture this. You're at a gas station. You have enough money to fill up your tank, but you can't because you spent too much money on the fossil fuels this month. Or your car declines when going to re-up on ammunition for your guns. According to new data, that's the world's 68 countries, including the U.S., are moving towards with the development of central bank digital currencies. Our next guest has warned of the extensive overreach that this would allow, where all purchases must be cleared through the government. They can even limit your savings as well. If Trump finds his way back to the Oval Office, he says CBDC will never see the light of day. I will never allow the creation of a central bank digital currency, which is a method of stealing your money. The freedom that comes with a 20 or $100 bill, you can spend it on anything. But when government controls currency, they're going to control you and me and all Americans. That's exactly right. And essentially, you know, people wonder, what, what is a, a digital currency? Specifically, what is a central bank digital currency? It's basically the government version of a cryptocurrency. And like the government version of most things, it's pretty terrible. Unlike something like Bitcoin, where you and I can transact with each other, and it doesn't have to go through anyone else, a central bank digital currency has to go through a central authority. So these CBDCs can be traced, they can be tracked, they can be taxed. Every single cent, because every single cent has a unique fingerprint. At any moment in time, the government will always know where every single cent of its currency is around the world, in your wallet, in my wallet, in anywhere else. So any, as you've written, any government apparatchik who does doesn't believe in the Second Amendment could make a decision to bar someone from buying not just a weapon um, that's legal, but also ammunition. How close are some governments to rolling out these digital currencies? It's very scary. Some governments are incredibly close. They already have pilot programs going. If you look at a country like China, for example, they are essentially just tacking this on to their social credit score system that they already have in place and, and have had for some time. And sometimes when I uh, try to warn people about CBDCs and the dangers that go along with them, people think that these are all like conspiracy theories. I'm simply quoting from people of organizations like the World Economic Forum, where they're already talking about using CBDCs as a way to control people to do what's good for them. Make no mistake about it, central bank digital currency is not a monetary system. It is a social credit system in which the governments of the world will tell you how you can spend your money. We can see that Christians will be persecuted using this system as they will try and force believers in Jesus Christ to adhere to their evil ways. When Christians say no, they will turn off your CBDC account. I hope you see how the mark of the beast comes into play as Christians who get saved after the rapture 
and have to endure the seven-year tribulation will not be able to buy or sell. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. The latest round of violent weather across the country. Powerful storms breaking out overnight in the Gulf Coast a day after a deadly string of 15 tornadoes in the heartland. ABC's Alex Perche is in Lakeview, Ohio with more. And Alex, that area has just been hammered by these storms. You walk this neighborhood, you can see just how powerful this storm really was. I mean, it ripped the front of this house completely off. The owner says that his kids usually sleep upstairs. Thankfully, they weren't home at the time, but this morning as they are cleaning up, so many here feel lucky, feel fortunate because they know things could have been much, much worse. Oh no. This morning, communities digging out from damage dealt by at least 15 tornadoes across seven states, stretching from Texas to Indiana. A deadly outbreak blamed for killing at least three people and leaving entire neighborhoods in ruin. The hardest hit, Ohio. This is the aftermath in Logan County from an EF3 tornado with winds of at least 136 miles per hour. Three dying in the storm, at least 20 sent to the hospital. You look at what's left on the ground from this home, and it's a, it's a pile of splinters. And, and around the corner, I mean, this, this is just utter destruction. The scene of the crime, I guess. In Lakeview, Ohio, Blaine Schmidt showed us how he survived the storm by crawling into his bathtub and praying. Today, the front of his home completely gone. He's thankful his wife and two kids weren't home at the time. It's just unreal. It's unreal. But you still have your family. Yeah, my family's everything important to me still here. A tornado also touching down in Crawford County, uprooting trees and flattening homes, with residents forced to clean up what's left. It was just, just really, really loud. I mean, you hear people say you hear a train or a loud, believe me, it was just, you couldn't hear hardly yourself talk. That's a big one. Please. Other states feeling the blow of the storm too. In Arkansas, this frightening scene as an EF2 tornado tears up everything in its path. This drone video showing the destruction near Little Rock, while other parts of the state dealing with flash flooding, more than half a foot of rain in some areas and tornadoes in Indiana damaging or destroying more than 100 homes. The increasing number of natural disasters and terrible storms have many people wondering who controls the weather, God or Satan. Some point to the descriptions of Satan as the prince of the power of the air in Ephesians 2.2 and the God of this world in 2 Corinthians 4.4 as evidence for Satan having control over the weather. An examination of scripture reveals that whatever influence Satan has over the weather is restricted by God's ultimate sovereignty. The devil, our adversary, must be taken seriously. We should acknowledge his existence and his limited power over the secular world. At the same time, Satan, a defeated fallen angel, is very powerful but not divine, having only the power that God ultimately allows. If Satan could impact the weather, it would only be by God's permission and restrained, as in the case of Job. Satan was allowed by God to torment Job in order to test him, and this included the fire of God, probably lightning, which fell from the sky and burned up the sheep and the servants, as we read in Job 1.16. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. This was followed by a mighty wind, possibly a tornado, that destroyed his eldest son's home and killed Job's children, as we read in verses 18 and 19. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. So if the fire from heaven and the tornado were somehow caused by Satan, 
They were still under the ultimate control of God for his purposes. It is God, not Satan, who controls the weather. God controls the skies and the rain. God controls the wind. God has power over the clouds. God has power over lightning. God is in control of all things, including the weather. Through his providence, God provides for and protects his children. But he also permits Satan, demons, and mankind to exercise their limited will to commit acts of sin, evil, and wickedness. We may not always know why evil acts or natural disasters happen, but we can be assured that God is working all things together for his purpose and for our good, as we read in Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Measles infections are on the rise. There are now 60 confirmed or suspected cases in 17 states. That's more than the total number of cases for all of last year, and we're only halfway through March. Chicago is the latest city to be hit with measles. To see an uptick in cases uh, where we haven't seen cases in the last five years is concerning for us. 12 confirmed cases so far, including 10 connected to the city's largest migrant shelter. Today, city health officials announced a new policy aimed at stopping the spread. Now migrants are required to get the MMR vaccine before going into shelters. Tell me the reason behind that. We want to safeguard the health of new arrivals. And as long as measles is circulating in our city, they can get sick. City health officials launched a mass vaccination campaign for migrants. Over 900 vaccinations were administered really in response to really doing the strategies that we know work to uh, contain measles outbreaks. This asylum seeker from Venezuela told CBS News he was vaccinated soon after arriving. Nationwide, measles vaccination rates have fallen since 2019. About 93 percent of kindergartners were vaccinated last year, falling short of the CDC's 95 percent goal. The first measles outbreak this year was in Pennsylvania, followed by outbreaks in 16 other states, including six cases at an elementary school in South Florida. There are a lot of people that are not vaccinated right now that need to be vaccinated to stop transmission. People around the world are asking what is going on. Everything seems to be falling apart in every possible way. Violence is at epidemic levels, with all the nations around the world full of anxiety and uncertainty of what tomorrow will bring. The Middle East is consumed by civil wars. Planet Earth is on the verge of World War III. Earthquakes are more frequent and more intense. Extreme weather has become the norm. We are seeing diseases that were once eradicated roaring back to life. People are starving to death because of politics, war, drought, and other weather-related catastrophes. People are looking for answers, and those who have eyes to see and ears to hear know exactly what is happening. Jesus, who is God in flesh form, is letting us know that through the events taking place around the world, he is returning. Overseas now and major developments in the Israel-Hamas war. Israel's war cabinet approving a plan to go after Hamas militants in Rafah and southern Gaza, including, they say, evacuating 1.4 million displaced Palestinians who have taken refuge there. And it comes as the first shipment of desperately needed aid has arrived in Gaza by sea. Tonight, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announcing plans for that controversial offensive into the southern Gaza city of Rafah to hunt for Hamas. The IDF says it would move 1.4 million Palestinians to humanitarian islands in central Gaza. They will provide them temporary housing, food, water, field hospitals. But U.S. officials say they've seen no plan. We have to see a clear and implementable plan, not only to get uh, civilians out of harm's way, but also to make sure that once out of harm's way, they're appropriately cared for. Amid a growing rift with Netanyahu, President Biden today praising Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's blistering rebuke of the Israeli leader. I think he uh, expressed a serious concern shared not only by him, but by many Americans. Today, the first maritime shipment of aid arriving off the coast of Gaza but distribution of the aid remains a challenge. The hunger is killing us, said this man. I'm still going to go to Rafa so I can eat and feed my children. But Rafa may not be a refuge for much longer. When Hamas has presented a new ceasefire proposal that would see about 40 Israeli hostages released in exchange for up to 1,000 Palestinians from Israeli prisons, Netanyahu has called that unrealistic. Still, he is sending a delegation to Doha 
for negotiations. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Luke 21:25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days, right before the return of Jesus Christ, is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. The humanitarian crisis in Haiti is worsening as escalating gang violence rips the Caribbean nation apart. On Friday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the plan to create a transitional presidential council on the island is moving forward after the prime minister was forced to resign. The transitional governing body aims to restore stability in a country where political turmoil is driving a rise in hunger. Chaos and unease in Haiti's capital. This week, the main prison there was set on fire. Violence that has plagued the nation for years escalated since a brazen prison break there two weeks ago, forcing thousands to flee their homes. I don't know what to do anymore, this man says. I was shot at. Tear gas is being used against us. It's a crime against humanity. At the border with the Dominican Republic, the gates have opened, with tens of thousands of Haitians pouring in. But there's a catch. They can only travel a hundred yards into the country, and they all need to be back in Haiti before sundown. It's a small window, a couple of days a week for Haitians to shop for goods at this open-air market. Most carry back what they can, on foot, pushing carts, even on their head. When the market reopened today, men were put on one side, women and children on another side. Dominican officials tell us this has been happening ever since the prison break. The market is the lifeblood on both sides of the border, now choked ever since the crisis in Haiti escalated. About 75% less customers. Yes. Thomas Liberato, who runs this live chicken coop, says he is at risk of bankruptcy. So you used to sell about 5,000 chickens. You're down to 250 to 500 chickens. Due to the crisis in Haiti, some customers have stopped coming. Gangs block the roads to the border. They steal chickens from his customers. And then there's the days Dominican officials shut it down. On Friday, this was the scene as Haitians rushed the border and it had to be temporarily closed. Sometimes it doesn't reopen. Border tensions remain high. Friday night, just about 100 yards behind me on the Haitian side of the border, gunfire rang out. And then earlier in the week, two Haitian nationals attempting to cross the border were shot by a Dominican soldier. One was killed. In war-torn Sudan, nearly 230,000 children, pregnant women and new mothers could die from hunger in the coming months unless urgent life-saving funding is released to help them. That's according to international NGO Save the Children. It revealed that nearly 3 million children are already acutely malnourished and up to 730,000 children under five are suffering from severe acute malnutrition. It comes as the destruction of fields and factories in a civil conflict, which has raged for almost a year, has disrupted food production and its distribution across the country. According to the United Nations, the fighting could trigger the world's largest hunger crisis, as more than half of the Sudanese population, including 14 million children, require humanitarian assistance to survive. This is what's known as the Ramadan rush. People come to markets such as this one in the city of Taiz to stock up on special foods and buy gifts for their loved ones. But for many Yemenis, their excitement this Ramadan is mixed with tension. There are concerns about the lack of access to food supplies, especially as military operations affect international shipping in the Red Sea. This affects the entry of food, and it's natural for people to be concerned under these circumstances. 
Life in Yemen has been unstable for years with war and frequent outbreaks of violence. Houthi attacks on commercial ships that began in November have severely disrupted global trade. In response, American and British warplanes have been carrying out joint attacks on suspected Houthi weapon sites. What's happening in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden in relation to the military attacks by the Houthi militias has cast a shadow on the economic situation. It's led to an increase in the cost of shipping goods and the cost of insuring them. As a result, this issue has added to the already deteriorating economic situation and has led to food shortages in the markets. Traders who've been working here for years say business is bad. We are being affected by poor sales. When people don't come to buy from us, our goods stay here for a long time. It's not an exaggeration to say some of them are spoiling. As the Houthis, the UK and the US continue their military confrontations, people here hope for a time of peace without financial burden. The Bible tells us there will be war, sickness and famine right before Jesus returns, as we read in Matthew 24, 3 through 8. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, all these are the beginning of sorrows. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. We are fast approaching a time known as the tribulation that Jesus says will be the worst time in human history as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes the price of food being so high and scarce that it will cost a full day's wages just to barely get enough to eat as we read in Revelation 6, 5 and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. In this prophecy, it will cost a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. We are not in the tribulation period yet, but we are getting extremely close. Revelation 20, 11 through 15 Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Is your name written in the book of life? If not, I pray you get that done today, as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity 
with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.